Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, N6DMR with BridgeCom Technical Support. Today's video will be uh, setting up a code plug, your first code plug, in the Anytone uh, programming software. So first thing I want to do is I want to show you some websites and uh, some other information that I'll be using in this video. So we're going to be talking about uh, DMR ID. So the link for the uh, radioid.net where you find DMR IDs is there. I'm going to be briefly uh, talking about the Brandmeister uh, talk groups and Brandmeister network. So there's the link for that. We're going to be using repeater book to find repeater frequencies, PL tones, color codes, etc. What I'm going to do today is use, uh, I'm going to set up an analog channel and I'm going to set up a DMR channel. And I've selected uh, W4NRG in Jacksonville for the analog and W7BEN for uh, the digital. And the three talk groups that I'm going to be using to set up our code plug today are Brandmeister USA 3100, which is the nationwide USA. We're going to set up 3112, which is the Florida State talk group. And then we're going to do a BM Parrot 9990, which is basically an echo test. This is a unique uh, situation because echo tests are always set as private calls. So I'm going to leave this up on the screen for just a few minutes uh, so that you can take a look at it. And also, if you want to stop the video and take a screenshot. OK, so let's go ahead and get started on the code plug portion of it. I'm going to open up my D878UV Anytone customer programming software. Uh, this is version CPS version 1.21. It is the latest version as of today. Um, looking at this, I was just going to quickly go over the menus. Uh, you have a top menu system. You, you have a file where you can open up a code plug or save a code plug. Um, model information will tell you what band is in the radio or in the code plug, actually, not the radio. Um, you have a set command, which you can actually uh, reset the code plug or you can do a setcom. Uh, I use setcom quite a bit. Um, I'll watch as my radio uh, gets uh, turns on and uh, connects to the uh, CPS with the COM ports. Right now, we're not going to be writing to the radio uh, in this demo. And then we have a tool, a program menu. You can read or write from the radio. We have a tool menu. Um, one thing very quickly is if you're new to the CPS and this is the first time you're installing this version or a new version, you'd need to go to the options menu. And depending upon what's in your radio, you need to tell the CPS what's in your radio. In this case, it's an 878 plus. It uh, has a GPS, has Bluetooth, and it's capable of APRS. So, okay, that said, what we're looking at here is the channel side of uh, the channel window, let's call it. And it's underneath the public menu system. Um, there's uh, some important things that are minimum requirements in order to have a code plug actually write to the radio. I'm gonna open up the digital section here. We're gonna start with the radio ID. Uh, the code plug must have a radio ID in order to write into the radio. This doesn't matter whether or not it's analog channels you're setting up or DMR channels or digital channels. The code plug must have a radio ID. Let's click on it. In this case, it's the uh, default radio ID, which works perfectly for analog channels with no problem. Uh, most likely, if you use a bogus ID, you'll be able to listen to DMR channels and, but not transmit. In this case, um, we would open this up by double clicking and we would enter in your DMR ID and your call sign name, whatever you would care for. Because I'm actually just demoing today, I'm not going to be changing this. What's important to know is that you must have at least one radio ID or the code plug will not write to the radio. Okay, so the next uh, step is to look quickly at channels. These are the default channels that come into the uh, uh, CPS when you read the radio. Uh, this is the default code plug that's in the radio. These are all kind of bogus channels, examples, etc. We're going to start today on line 10, and uh, we're going to be actually uh, doing an analog and then uh, three digital channels. Um, next step is once you finish with a channel, 
you will not see the channel in the radio unless you put it into a zone. So this is a zone. Right now it's named zone one and it has all eight of the bogus channels in it. Um, and this way, this code plug will write to and from the radio. So it has the uh, things that are necessary for analog channels, but there's one additional contact or talk group. And these are uh, your Brandmeister or DMR Mark or TGIF, whatever network you're using. We use Brandmeister pretty exclusively at BridgeCom. Uh, and it's probably the most popular network, and that's what I'll be demoing today. In this case, we have a bogus uh, talk group, uh, so uh, but at least it has one. So to, to recoup, you in order to write to a code plug, you need at least one channel, you need at least one zone, you need one radio ID, and you need one talk group. Okay, so let's go back to the channel. What I'm going to do first is show you a quick programming flow diagram. So if you're going to be programming an analog channel, the first thing we need to make sure of is that we have a DMR ID in the code plug. Then we will go ahead and create a channel. <coughs> excuse me. And once the channel or channels are created, we'll be putting them into a zone. And that's the analog programming flow. And that's what I'm going to start with today. So um, first thing I'm going to do is uh, start a new one here. I'm going to put this down. And remember, I said we were going to be using uh, W4 uh, RNG, and that's in Jacksonville. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you how to go and find the information that you need in a website called Repeater Book. So let's go right to Repeater Book right now. Snick over there. Uh, this is repeaterbook.com. Uh, I did give you the full link at the beginning of the video, and I'll pop, pop that up uh, on the end of the video as well. So once, you've, once you log into repeaterbook or open repeaterbook, you have some choices here. The, what I like to do is go right to the North American repeaters. I'm always programming North American repeaters. That's, uh, today we're going to be looking at Jacksonville. So I'll click on North American repeaters. Now this opens up a map method or a state listing. So if you wanted to uh, find a analog repeater in Florida, you can click on the Florida state, same with any of the other states, or you could click down in the state listing of Florida. It would be the same thing. So let's go ahead and open up Florida and let's find a analog repeater in Florida. All right, so now we've opened up, there's some other uh, search features that you can use here. Um, you can limit yourself to two meter repeaters in Florida, uh, 70 centimeter or UHF repeaters in Florida. If you were looking strictly for DMR repeaters, you could click on DMR repeaters. In this particular case, I'm going to just not drill down. I'm just going to be looking at Florida and I'm going to go and look down further here. And this is the nearest city in town. So I know that I want to find repeater in Jacksonville, Florida. So that's where we're going to be going to. So we're going to go right down here to Jacksonville on the left-hand side right here. Now, when we select Jacksonville, it's going to pop up. It's going to show you the repeaters in Jacksonville. They're going to be all the analog, all the uh, digital, every repeater that's in Jacksonville area. And in this case, it's, uh, they're all in Duval County. So the, remember I had said we were going to select a uh, particular uh, uh, repeater, sorry, and it's a W4RNJ, and it's here, W4RNJ, and it's, a, uh, it's either at the Dane Bridge Point or uh, it also has a repeater that's um, on the uh, Jacksonville Old Augustine Road. So we're going to actually use the Dames Point Bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, we're actually going to use the straight Jacksonville. I'm sorry. So we'll open that up by clicking on the frequency of the Jacksonville. And this gives you a listing of the repeater. It shows you a map of where it's at. And then it also will give you the downlink or the receive frequency. It will give you the uplink or transmit frequency. And it will give you the uh, uplink and downlink PL tones. 
that are necessary to hear the repeater and to get the squelch off the repeater with tone. So I've already printed these out and I have them in front of me, but this is how we would actually find a repeater. If you have no idea where it is, you'd search it in the repeaterbook.com. So let's move back to the radio programming software. So I've got the repeater up here, W4RNG. The, tr the receive frequency is 146.7600. And I can put an extra zero on there. I'm going to use my tab key to go down to the transmit frequency. And it's a standard minus six offset, which means it's 146 dot, pardon me, dot 1600. Okay, got a mistake there. This is what happens. This is real life. I like to make mistakes. 146 dot. 160, correct frequency, tab over, now it's taken the frequency. So this is the downlink frequency and the uplink frequency. Now, this is set right now as a blank channel for digital. That is not what we want. We want to set this for analog. My particular choice is to use analog or digital. They have some hybrid uh, modes here, channel types. I do not personally use these. Uh, and as a new user starting a code plug, concentrate on just analog and digital channels. So we'll choose analog. Now, the transmit power is typically set on high, depending upon where you are and how far away you are from the repeater. High is normally the standard. If you are having some problems reaching the repeater, you could use a turbo mode, which is uh, gives you a couple extra watts. Um, it definitely uh, try high first. And uh, now the bandwidth for analog FM is 25 kilohertz. So we'll change that to 25 kilohertz. And uh, so what we've done is name the channel after the repeater. We've got the, the receive and transmit frequencies. We've set the settings for a typical analog FM channel. Now we have to go down to the analog CTCSS slash DC. DCS windows here. So this is what we're going to turn on, and we're going to we're going to pick CTCSS. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, CTCSS is typically your PL tones that are current right now. DCS is still available. It's an older system, and there are some repeaters that use it, but typically we'd be using CTCSS. Now, on the repeater book listing, it's 127.3. So we'll Scroll down, we'll pick 127.3. Now it requires a, a decode and an encode, which decode is your receive, encode is your transmit. So we'll do the same thing. We'll select CTCSS and we'll go ahead and put in the correct tone. Now there's one other step that you have to do with an A-tone radio, and that's to change the squelch mode. When the squelch mode is on carrier, it's going to open the carrier all the time as long as there's audio. If you want to limit that to only opening with these tones, we need to change this to the CTCSS slash DCS mode. And that, my friends, is the exact setup for our first analog channel. I'm going to review just quickly. Channel repeater name, receive transmit frequency, setting it on analog choosing the power, bandwidth 25K, CTCS tone for outbound and inbound is 127.3, and we've set the squelch mode so that it will activate when it hears a tone. Without a tone, the radio will not open, the squelch will not open, and this is the preferred way when you're using a repeater that has a PL tone. So we'll click OK on this. Now we've got that in there. Now the next thing we have to do if once we create a channel is we have to actually put the channel into a zone. I'm going to go up to zones now over here in the public menu. I already have a zone created, so I'm going to create another one. That's the default zone one. I'm going to call this one the name of the repeater. Well, actually, let's call it analog because we could put more than one repeater in, in this uh, uh, zone. So as you can see, these first seven are the default channels. Number 10 is the channel we just created, named after the repeater, we're going to put that in the zone. That's it. We're done.
So what we've created an analog zone and we've put our first analog channel into that zone. Okay, at this point, you're finished with creating a channel on the analog side of the radio. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at, and let's review the, the flow of that. DMR ID must be in there, regardless of whether you're in digital or you're on analog. We have to create a channel and we have to put it in a zone. Good deal, so that's a quick review. Now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna skip down to, to uh, channel line 12 here. We're gonna be looking now at creating a digital channel. So the programming flow for a digital channel is somewhat the same as an analog. Always need a DMRD to start with. In this particular case though, we now need to add talk groups. After we add talk groups, we can do a channel because, and then the channel will need to select the talk group to be active on. And then when we finish making the channel, we're gonna be able to go ahead and put it into a zone. Very, very easy stuff from a flow standpoint, very simple flow here. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna go down to number 12 here and I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna call this a digital channel. So it comes up defaulted as digital. Now I've selected uh, K7BEN, K7BEN in Jacksonville for my next digital uh, channel. So we're just gonna name this for now. We'll get back to setting the channel up further. The first thing I want to really do, according to the programming flow, I want to go from DMRID to talk group. So let's get that talk group in there. Contact and talk groups are synonymous. They are the same. If you're looking at a channel here, you'll see that it says contact up here. It is actually also talk group. It's the same thing. For some reason, Anytone uses different nomenclature for the same thing. But here they've corrected it by allowing you to see that it is a contact or a talk group cancel this. So let's open this. I'll double click on talk groups. Now what's in here is what's called the default talk group. It actually is not really a, a good talk group. So remember what I said I was going to use are three different talk groups, all Brandmeister, USA 3100, Florida State 3112, and Parrot 9990. So let's go ahead and put those talk groups in. I'm going to go ahead and change this talk group here. I'm going to call this USA 3100. Oops, sorry. 3100. It will be a group call. The only time you wouldn't make this a group call if you were trying to go point to point with someone else's DMR ID to your DMR ID or with the parrot talk group, which needs to be a, a, a private call. So the talk group ID or number is 3100, 3100. So we've named it, it's a group call, and we've put the, TMR, uh, the DMR talk group number in. And these, these talk groups are available on the Brandmeister network. Um, we'll go into that in just a few minutes. Let me put the other two talk groups in that we spoke about. So this one is gonna be Florida, statewide. It's a group call, and the ID or talk group number is 311. Two, three, one, one, two. Okay, so that's that one. Now we're gonna do a parrot. <clears throat> I like to name my channels with a convention, typically the name of the channel, so I know pretty much what the talk group or the channel is doing. And then I also like to put the actual talk group. Now in the parrot's case, this is the exception to the group call. We wanna make this a private call and it's 9990. And that is the way you add talk groups to your code plug. So we've got three talk groups added, and the next step is gonna to be to create three channels for the digital repeater. So let's go out very quickly and take a look at repeater book. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna get out of the W4RNG. We're gonna go down and we're gonna look for W7 our K7BEN, sorry, and that is a DMR repeater. I know that because instead of a uh, PL tone, I'm looking at a color code. Now, if we had used the DMR uh, segregation search, we would only see DMR. Let's go back and do that. Go up. So we're in Florida. I'm gonna select just DMR repeaters. 
and we're going to look we're going to sort them they're sorted by frequency right now let's sort them by call and we're going to be looking for k7ben and here's k7ben in duval county so we'll click on the frequency open it up <coughs> This now will give us the downlink frequency and the uplink frequency. And it is a standard UHF offset of plus five megahertz. Color code is color code one. And then these are some talk groups and the time slots that the talk group is set on the repeater as a static talk group. So what they've done here is they have the North America slot one, time slot one, and then they've also got others. And here in Florida, they want to use slot two. This is typical for local code plugs where you would be able to have people talking on North America on slot one and on Florida or any other talk group on slot time slot two. I'm not going to kind of go into this in too much detail, but I just wanted to, to show you this. Uh, so you understand when I set the, the slot, the time slot, you'll know what I'm doing. Now, there's this is a great talk uh, or repeater because they actually have a talk group view which you can click on on DMR only not on analog and it will show you all the different channels that you can or talk groups you can use on this repeater so the interesting thing is we, we pick 3100 okay and 3100 will be on slot time slot 2 Florida 3112 slot time slot 2 and there's some echo channels down at the, and parrots. They're not the, quite the same parrot, but Brandmeister will use the 9990 that I have and will use it on slot two because that it seems like this repeater is set up for slot two to be the primary time slot on push to talk channels. And that's what these are called push to talk, PTT, or dynamic. So I've already taken care of this. Let's go back to our. CPS here, and we're going to go up to the channels. We've got our talk groups in. I put the three talk groups in. Now, this is where there's a difference on digital repeaters. Digital repeaters will use the same frequency, but they will allow you to set different talk groups. So you will key up on the frequency of the repeater, but you will be able to key up on different talk groups. So we need to create a channel for each talk group we want to use. In this case, 3100, 3112, and Parrot 9990. So let's first get the frequencies in. And the downlink or the receive is 442-0000. The uplink or transmit is 447.0000, which is the plus five standard. Now, something that's a little different than analog, we now have, because we're in a digital channel here, we have a DMR mode. Since we're splitting frequencies and we're talking on one frequency and listening on another frequency, this is called the repeater mode. It's very important in a setting a digital channel, going out to a repeater, that you choose the correct mode here because the repeater and the uh, radio will make a handshake and when they connect. And that's this DMR mode repeater allows that handshake to be uh, active. Now with digital, uh, it's also a repeater in the distance. We're gonna use high. The bandwidth is already set for 12.5K, which is what digital FM is, DMR FM is. Our transmit permit, I leave mine at always. People will wanna change this. Some of them will wanna do only when the channel's free, if there's a different color code. These are kind of advanced things. I'm gonna just use always for this particular demo. Now we have a radio ID we have a talk group. Now it defaults to the first talk group in the list. So in this particular case, I'm going to change my channel name to the repeater for the repeater name plus the talk group. Okay, so it's going to be K7BN 3100 USA. So it's already set to that. But let's double click on or click on this. And let's go out. These are your talk groups. This is the 3100. We'll pick it again. Now, remember, we said that the color code would be one, but the time slot would be two. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put slot two in here. The important thing to understand with this is the information that you get from repeater book will give you the color code and the time slot. It will not change unless you're changing a talk group and the color code will never change it unless the repeater owner changes it. So at this point, we have actually set up our first K7BEN 3100 USA channel. So I'm going to click OK and save this. Now, this is a little bit of a shortcut tip that I'm going to show you. Since we're always going to be using the same frequency and settings the majority of the time, I can click on this line, 12, actually right click on this line, and I can copy it. And I can right click on the 13 line and paste it. And it will create an identical channel with the exception of a renaming. You can't have two channels with the same name. So when you do a copy and paste, it renames. Now this particular channel here, all the frequencies, the digital, the 12.5, everything is correct. The only thing you'll have to change now is the name of the channel and the talk group. So let's open it up and go ahead and do that. So this one here is going to be Florida. 3112 Florida statewide. Okay. Now, this naming convention is important to know. And when we put these channels in a zone, you'll see why this is important. But on my digital repeaters, I always use the repeater name and then I put the talk group and the rest of the name in here. So, because it's going to be on talk group 3112, we need to get it changed here. So, we'll click on this. We have Florida statewide in here, it's 3112. We'll click on it, there's the 3112. Double click on it, or click on it again. There we go, double click on it. We've set this now to Florida statewide. We've renamed it Florida statewide. All the other, uh, uh, including the time slot, everything has not changed, it's the same. So the cut and paste is a very quick way to put in a number of channels for the same repeater. So let's do the same thing here. We've, we've already copied it, so let's just paste again. This puts the USA1 in. Now let's put this up to Parrot. So we're going to put K7BEN9990 Parrot. Change the name. Whoops, Parrot. So let's do this a little different here since we don't have enough. We'll put um, Parrot. And we'll use the last two digits so I know it's parrot 90. Okay, so remember, we copied and pasted frequencies, settings, everything is the same, slot two, color code one, but we have to change the talk group to match the name of the channel. We open it up, we find the parrot, we double click it. Now we're on parrot 990, we're all set to go. Now, on my last video, uh, uh, folks were a little bit confused, so I wanna do this again, but I wanna do it slower. I'm gonna click on this. This is where all your talk groups will be listed. When you have a lot of talk groups, this screen will fill up. So your naming convention becomes very important if you want to find things. Anyway, let's continue on with private call 990. Click OK. All right, we've created three digital channels. Now we have to put them into a zone. Now what I do when I go to put these in a zone is I'll create a new zone and I will call it after the repeater, K7BEN, because we have multiple channels going out to that repeater. And as you can see down in the listing of channels, I know which channels I wanna put into the zone because of my naming convention. I know that these channels are going to be using the frequency for K7BEN. So let's put them over in the zone. Click on here, move them over to the zone. Number two, move over to the zone. It's already highlighted, we'll move it over to the zone. So now we took the three channels we created and we put them in the K7BEN zone. All right, so that's pretty much uh, uh, programming the radio and ready to write this code plug. And we'd have uh, uh, two zones, analog, the digital channel, the three digital channels with the talk groups, and this is an actually good code plug that we could write. Now, if I was creating this for myself, I would delete the default code plugs or I would write over the default code plugs and I would put other channels in their place. But I didn't want to take the time to do that in the video. So basically what we've done on the digital side 
is we followed the programming flow. We created and, and entered a DMR ID. We did that right up front and never changed it. I entered three talk groups. We, ent we, we, we created three channels, one for each talk group, and we put those channels into a zone. So that's pretty much the, the programming that's going to be going on. And uh, what I am going to do also is I'm going to do two other additional steps here. I'm going to do some additional programming where we create a receive group and we create a scan list because these are very popular things that folks like to do. So up here in the digital side, let's first create a scan list. So we'll click on the scan list. Now it has a default scan list one. I'm not going to, I'm going to change this. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put this scan list as K7 BEN. Now I'm going to remove all these bogus channels. There's no sense in having them there. But I am going to add all three of the K7 BEN channels. Now, if I wanted to, there's no reason why, if I'm within range of this repeater, in the analog repeater, I could also put the analog repeater in there as well. Whoops, wrong one. Sorry about that, guys. I could also put W4RNG in here as well. Now, what the scan list does for you it allows you to scan for these channels that are in your zone or in your scan list. And the, what we have to do is we have to turn scan on. And in the Anytone radio, that means setting a function key. So just to go over what we've done, we, we changed this scan list to the repeater, digital repeater. We added the three digital channels. I even went and put in the analog channel. So while we're scanning, we'll scan digital and we'll scan analog. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Um, these priority channel settings and the look back and et cetera are a little bit more advanced than I want to go into today. But you'll notice if you click into a field in the CPS, there's a quick help guide. So look back time would be during scanning, it will scan the priority channel when the checkbox is checked every time. So that's if I go to something else, revert channel, there's a little information on what the revert channel does. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this is a basic code plug. I just want to get us started on scanning. So remember now, we've got our scan list. We go to our channels. When I'm on a channel, I can set the scan list that I want to use. Here's where you set the scan list. This works in analog or digital. So here I'm going to set, select K7BEN as my scan list and click OK. Now, I want, when I'm talking on K7BEN, I want every channel that I'm talking on to, to be scanned. And, and when I change from 3100 to 3112, I still want to keep scanning. So I'm going to go ahead and set the scan list on all three of these channels. Well, there's no sense in setting it on Parrot because that's, that's an echo channel, so there's no sense. So we'll put them on these two channels. Now, remember I said we have to set a function key in order to turn scanning on. And that's, no matter what you do with the Anytone, this has to happen. It's the only way to turn scanning on. So we'll go to optional settings over here, and we'll go to key functions. Now, the PF1, PF2, PF3 shorts, um, uh, this is a short press. The PF1 is the... Uh, uh, push button right underneath the push to talk. PF2 is the second one down from the push to talk. PF3 is the colored button at the top. So for this, for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to actually set the color code, color coded button at the top for scan. So I'm going to be looking down for the scan function here. Now there's a difference between VFO scan and scan. The radio has both modes. VFO scan you use when you're wanting to be in the VFO mode and scan. It's a little different than the normal memory scan. Let's keep going down. Let's find the actual real scan. Now we haven't seen it, so we must have missed it. So let's go back up. Remember, we don't want to use VFO scan. And here it is right here. This is the scan function that I want, I'll select it, click OK. Now, every time I short press the blue button on the top of the radio, 
I'll be turning scan off or turning scan on. And that's how you create scan lists. That's how you put a scan list to a channel and using the function key, how you turn scanning on and off. So the next thing I want to talk about is receive group call list or receive groups. I'm going to open this up. We have a group listing here. Now, this basically will tell you down here what we're doing. You can leave this blank if all you want to do is listen to the same channel you transmit on. Then, under channel setup in the section below, select none for the receive group list in the channel. If you want to listen to more talk groups besides the talk group up, set in the channel setup, add the talk group in the receive call list, and then put the call list into the channel. You can, so you can program 64 talk groups per receive group. So what that means is, this is my Florida statewide. This, this, this um, list already has one uh, channel in there for digital channel in there. So we're going to add the Florida channel. And I'm going to put this to be K7BEN. Uh, you'll notice my naming conventions are staying pretty consistent. So now I have a receive group. What will happen is if you're on 3100, you will still be able to receive 3112 if there's traffic. If you're on 3112, you could still receive 3100. Now, this is a feature of, of a receive group when you want specific talk groups and you want to listen to those specific talk groups. You don't have to listen to every channel that's in the uh, this particular repeater. In this case, there's two valid channels, so I'm using them. Now, what we do now is we go back to channel, and on the 3100, only on the digital channels, we'll open this up, and there is a receive group listing right here underneath the time slot. We can now set that to K7BN. What that means is when we're on 3100, we'll be listening to all the talk groups that are in this talk group list. Now, the reason that I set it for the repeater is because you're usually you're in the repeater range for one repeater. So if you could do multiple repeaters, if you have them in your area, you could do multiple channels to different repeaters. But in this case, I kept it simple. I just put the two of them in there. So what we've done now is we finished with our additional programming. I showed you how to create a receive group, put it into the channel listing so it's active. I also showed you how to do a scan list, put the scan list into the channels, and also how to turn scan on and off by setting a, 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 a key button, key function with the blue button on top in this case. So again, I said I'd put this back up. Need a DMR ID? You go to Radio ID Net, Brandmeister Talk Group Network. You could, you, Brandmeister has a list of talk groups. If you want to see them, you can go out on their uh, wiki and find them. Repeater book for finding the repeater functions and frequencies, color codes. PL tones. We set up an analog repeater channel. We set up three channels for DMR repeater, and we use these three talk groups. So thank you so much for listening today. I appreciate it. I'm going to go back now, finish off right from the Bridgecom webpage where we started. Again, Dwayne Reese, N6DMR, Bridgecom Technical Support. Have a good time. Hopefully this helps you on programming. For everything that I did, analog channels or digital channels, you can repeat the exact sequence that I did, and you could add as many channels, up to 4,000 in the radio. So thank you again.